Well, it's still the breakfast and plus TV Africa. If you just tuned in, we're about to go through the pages of the national dailies. And it's good to have you join us. Uh, Chris Kende joins the conversation. Wandu is the executive director of African Governance and Leadership Initiative. Chris, it's good to have you join us this morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me. All right. Uh, let's quickly start off with the punch newspaper. We have all the papers, but uh, we start off with the punch. Now, on the punch, it talks about the Oshun governorship election. Uh, Oshun governorship polls. A delicate camp worries over litigation and woes PDP faction. All aggrieved members constitute danger. We're talking to Babai Emi, uh, the PDP spokesman, is quoted to say, I mean, one would want to begin to think that some people said, we also remember that there was a reconciliation uh, committee that was set up. And, and some people say that the reason that the PDP had uh, the victory in Oshun State is because of the fact that they were able to take care of all of the bickering within the party. I expect Oyetala to have congratulated me. Uh, concede defeat, says governor elect. A delicate is quoted than that. And Oshun governor lawyer inspect election results may head for court. Uh, Tunubu awaits uh, government or action. However, that's what you see uh, right there. This right is underneath the banner caption. Away from that, the federal government, the United Nations, to identify terrorists and criminals at airports. That's if the airports will be functional. Ben, we, uh, Bini Disco's challenges, P, BPE plans United Kingdom legal action, and NLC Dares Police says protest notification unnecessary. Okay. Uh, do not forget that the NLC has said that there will be a protest between the 26th of July and, and, and the 27th of July, and this is to ensure that, uh, you know, the government gets into its agreement to enter, you know, with ASU. Uh, ASU and the government will call off its lingering strike. Aero suspends operation over skyrocketing Jet A1 prize. You have orders. Uh, that's what you find. Shanti's shop raised as fire guards Lagos sawmill. Very, very sad. I mean, if you look at the picture, you can only imagine what will happen in a sawmill. Asu mid's August first strike enters 155 day. Again, you find another caption saying Ogun resident flee homes and decry government neglect. Lagos court jails businessman 60 years for fraud. And pass apply to drop again TCN alerts Nigerians. Oh no. Fans mourn the death of Nollywood actress uh, Ame, and you also have uh, the Shola who died as well. Or your government, or your gets new deputy governor and false uh, impeachment. It would be the crux of our conversation as we proceed, but away from. The punch, and that's because we have the nation newspaper. 100% pay rise likely for striking varsity teachers. Buhari may lead talks, prolonged class boycott dangerous to youth future, and you see cautions. Marking Day inaugurates Lawal as deputy uh, shortly after Raouf actually decamped, uh, defected to the APC. Tunubu to present Shatima tomorrow. Uh, a lot of persons had thought that, you know, with the outcry of the people, that maybe the, you know, the APC would probably have or reconsider. Now, gunmen kill soldiers, nine others in Plateau, Imo, Nigeria, Netherlands signed pacts on food security. Gov federal government silent as marketers hike petroleum uh, pump price. Uh, but also had reports saying that it was sort of a subtle agreement between the federal government and, you know, the oil marketers. Again, aero contractors suspend flights. These are the headlines you find this morning on the Nation newspaper. Away from the Nation, we have, uh, we also have the state newspaper. On this day newspaper, winners and losers, how they shaped Ogoshun governorship polls. 
winners and losers, how they shaped Oshun governorship poll, and seven takeaways from Oshun gubernatorial election, more like an editorial. And you find Tunubu Adebuayo meet over Muslim Muslim tickets. And that's another one you find this morning. And NMPC transition group CFO expected to intensify internal checks and controls. 2023, INEC in talks with CBN over election material storage, says Okoye. <laughs> you remember a time where you, you had a CBN governor who had said he was interested in becoming, not necessarily, but he felt like it, it was rumored. And people expressed concern that how can this thing be, especially when you know that election materials have been stored, you know, in the Central Bank of Niger. How, how can you be a person of interest? Because at the end of the day, I mean, what would happen? How disciplined can you be? But that's it on the this day. We quickly just run through the Daily Trust, and then we have Chris Kane Day, who joins the conversation. Boko Haram orders ambush soldiers attack four states in six hours. And uh, CJTF chair, four members killed in Borno. Troops foil attack in Niger, two killed, one injured in Plateau, and seven-year-old killed, 19 orders abducted, abducted in FCT and Katsina. The riders you find, Yobe Flood, four dead as 11 communities relocate. Terrorism, UN borders, NCAA to unscale strict passenger and profiling uh, regime. As to strike banks, aviation unions threaten to shut down operation. But do you think that the, you know, the government or the relevant quarters would blink? Airlines bleed as Niger's oldest carrier, aero contractors halts operation. Again, you find uh, impeached Lawal takes uh, oath as new or your deputy governor. Raouf impeached and Lawal takes oath as new deputy uh, governor of your state. A woman sues ex-husband for marrying her best friend. A lot of things are going on in the world. And that's it this morning on the Daily Trust newspaper. Chris Kane, then let's, let's have you share your thoughts now. Once again, thank you for making our time to be part of the breakfast. We appreciate you and we appreciate your time as well. Thank you very much for having me once again. Uh, so, so let's start off with the punch. I mean, it's interesting. The Oshun elections have actually come... Uh, and has gone, but not really gone, because there's a lot that we need to grapple with. And this morning, Adelike's camp worries over litigation. Was the PDP faction? Uh, what do you make of this? Yes, uh, in this part of the world, um, don't forget that um, election. The outcome of an election will all bring up a lot of things, discussions the satisfaction and the likes. And there's always a tendency for most people not to agree with the umpire and the result of the election. So those that are agree are permitted by the Electoral Act and have built the Constitution of the Republic of Nigeria 1999 as amended to seek redress in the court of law. Um, normally what happens is that the tribunal, the election tribunal is not acceptable uh, to those issues, and I'm sure that will be set up as soon as possible. And anybody who agrees agree will definitely uh, have to go to court. Uh, but uh, on the part of PDP, I feel that uh, is looking at and is uh, trying to make sure that they handle the situation within their own front and have uh, a, a, a coercive front. And uh, all those that agree within the party uh, would be made to come to terms with what has happened and support the governor-elect. And of course, is their party candidate. So um, in, in the next few days and weeks, a lot of reconciliation will be done. And I believe that um, that in this help in assuaging those that feel aggrieved by um, either the primaries or the outcome of the election. Then the other part, of course, the APC they decide to go to court. But the interesting part for me is that um, uh, I'm just a bit worried why till now the, the, the governor of Washington State have not completed the winner of the election, irrespective of whether you agree with the outcome of the election or not. This court match demands that you congratulate the winner. Then you can go ahead to court and challenge the outcome. 
the president has done it as a statement by congratulating um, Senator Ademola Adele over his victory. And I expect the, the governor uh, to also do so, irrespective of whether he's going to court or, or not. And that he has not done. But it's not the first person doing that, even advanced country. Don't forget this, um, election in the United States, uh, it was totally false. And uh, the incumbent then refused to uh, congratulate the current president of the US, President Biden. And, um, and that was it. All right, so we seem to have a bit of uh, uh, some connection. So he did it. So, um, so for now, so, but let's watch and see how it, how it all pans out, sincerely. That's it. Well, as you already mentioned that, especially where, I mean, what, would one not say that this is a contradiction, especially where you had the president himself? He's of the All Progressive Congress, and he's the president, uh, you know, putting out the message of congratulation to Ademola Deleke. You should have just, uh, you know, gone as a signal that Oyetola should also, you know, follow suit at the end of the day. But like you have stated, it's not the first time that this has happened and it probably might not also be, you know, the second time it would happen. Well, fingers are crossed. And questions will always be, what's the essence of signing the peace pact? I mean, we know that a lot of persons, organizations, civil society organizations were heavily involved, you know, with the, uh, the process of the election. And, and everyone seemed to be coming uh, with, you know, a certain statement, especially where you also have the fact that, you know, results were being transmitted real time at each of the polling units, apart from one or two where, you know, there were failures of results that could not be transmitted. So, I mean, what what, what could have been really different? Chris Kane, do, uh, do we still have you on the line? All right, so hopefully we're able to, you know, uh, have Chris Kende join the conversation. But some people have also thought that it's only normal that you, you're going to have uh, all of this litigation going on. And when will we grow and move on from such a time where for every time you have an election, we understand people would always go to court. And then, you know, it constantly has to linger and all of that. Uh, when do we get to a point where you know, people would accept, you know, the process, the outcome of elections, and then go by it. Uh, I'm, I'm sure that gradually we will get there as uh, a matter of uh, growth. Let's not forget that our democracy is very nascent. But away from that, there's also another concern, uh, and that concern is about the NLC. NLC declares or dares the police and says that the protest notification is unnecessary. The NLC is saying that they are embarking on strike on, on the 26th and the 27th of July. And the police, in response to all of that, have stated that they have not been notified. And now, on the other hand, you have the NLC saying that, hey, it's not necessary. I mean, notification is not really necessary. But uh, I'd like to find out from Chris Kane Wendu his thoughts on this one. Chris, do we have you back online? Yes, I am back. Thank you very much. Oh, what do you make of this now? The NLC is, uh, seem to be daring the Nigerian police and saying that, hey, it's not necessary to have the notification because the police are saying, hey, we're not in the know of your protest and what have you. What do you make of the back and forth with the police and the NLC? The NLC um, have a right to it. It is within the right of the police to be able to make sure that that protest is uh, peaceful by providing necessary security. There has been so many judgments uh, as I get the issue of protest in Nigeria. And it has been in favor of any Nigerian group um, having the right to protest. Uh, I know that sometimes it was uh, one of the judgments that you don't need to inform the police uh, for whatever reason, but just make sure that it's peaceful. But if the NLC have not informed the police to do that, uh, it's the interest of me. But the police does not have right to stop anybody from protesting if they don't have that right. So if the NIC want to go, go on uh, uh, protest, they have the right, they have the constitutional right to do that. All they can do is inform the police and the police probably give them the necessary uh, guide uh, in the sense of protecting and making sure that that protest is not uh, partaking norms or grants or what, whatever guide. But look, let's look at the, the the main crux of the matter. 
the NSC is going on protest in solidarity with one of its uh, appellated union, which is ATU. And the fact is that um, ATU uh, has been on strike for several months now over its agreement with government, which the government has been on. And the government seems to have gone on, on, on to sleep. Don't see the, uh, the president was saying a few days ago that enough is enough, and I asked how. The ball is were caught at the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. The Minister of Education and that of states are practically completely. The Minister of Labor and that of uh, states, uh, Labor, have also gone to sleep. And they have totally um, left the university permanently closed and the children being at two. Some of them have to lose two sessions. And I've only paid the time with that number. It's because of the fact that most of them don't have their children in this session. In the last few uh, weeks, uh, um, uh, Messi, you must have seen pictures being posted on social media on high profile uh, individuals going to London, going to America, and the rest of them for the graduation of their children. And that is why you see that this thing lingers for long. If they have their own children in most of these universities, then you will find yourself ourselves where we are. And um, that is our will. So, uh, once again, NFC has the right to protest on behalf of any union, and that is what is going to happen. I don't see the police being able to stop them from doing that. All right, so um, let's uh, also still stay with the punch. I'm sure that with time we'll move away from the punch and look at all the papers. Um, this on the punch talks about uh, the fact that Aero suspends operation over the fact that Jet A1, uh, the price is on the high, and that's like an old... Uh, you know, airline uh, that has existed in Nigeria. Imagine uh, what's going to happen. Now, I want you to juxtapose this with the fact that the federal government and the UN is saying that we identify terrorists and criminals at the airports. It, it looks like we probably might just be slowing down. The airports might be shutting down, you know, anytime soon because if you don't have uh, these aircraft being able, or airlines being able to fly their aircraft, uh, moving people from one spot to the other, then, I mean, how do you, what, what do you make of all of this at this point now? Federal government is saying, hey, you know, terrorists, they're going to be identifying them. On the other hand, there's an airline that has shot our operation, and we don't know how many airlines are going to be going down due to, you know, um, the Jet A1 scarcity. Mercy, in, the next, in the next few days and weeks, I will tell you that something's going to give within the education sector. Um, yesterday, I, I, came, I just came back from Uyo, a white bomb uh, capital, and I paid 89,000 Naira for a one-way ticket. 89,000 Naira for a one-way ticket on my way back. How many people can afford to do that? It, it, what, we're even fighting over 50,000. I paid 89,000 Naira on a bomb air. I come back to Lagos today. I traveled on Friday. When I was going, I paid 74,000 naira. But coming back, I'm paying 89,000 naira. And it's not airlines because they don't have the version 12. Some of them go to the black market to be able to source this. And don't, don't forget that we also, a few weeks ago, about the month or two, the airline tried to go on strike because of this. Because they felt that there is no way um, because they, they, they can survive. The, the, the Jet A1 is price is going out of the roof, and they've been crying. And the government did a kind of intervention, and I said it that time that this is just a short time intervention that will not last more than one month. And what we are having now is that the airlines are having serious exclusion um, uh, period, try to meet up demand, especially when it comes to aviation fuel. And what can they do? They have the points. They don't have no other option, option than to raise their prices and. There was a government regulatory body that came that day and said, uh, no, they cannot do that. You cannot come together and raise your price. And, and I said, can you be able to put a man to ransom on his property? He said that he cannot meet demand. He cannot be able to get the request to be able to fly. And you are saying he cannot rise his price. You cannot be the judge and still stop him from crying. So that is the plight of the situation. If you go to the airport and see the rate at which flights are being cancelled and being delayed, some as much as about four to five hours. Because of this aviation fuel, you'll be surprised. The aviation industry is very key to every economy in all parts of the world. If the aviation industry is affected, 
then it has to have a roll-up effect on so many um, other sectors of the economy. And that is what is happening now. I hope that the government will do the needful and try as much as possible to make sure that this airline will not just totally cut out. One, because of the fact that if they, for any reason, try to start cutting corners, they will be back to the days when you saw ADC, EAS, um, Bellevue, um, Dana Air, and the rest of them just um, just collapsing and crashing of the of the sky, and the the, the 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 problem we are going to face will be enormous. So I'm just calling on the federal government, Ministry of Aviation, and uh, all those that are involved to be able to. Finish. The, uh, the airline operators have been saying that they should be allowed to also import um, the AJ-1 on their own. But the problem, Messi, is that even the central bank is not helping matters. They are not making um, the, um, the, was it, the dollar available to this airline to be able to do what they are uh, to do. I, somebody, one, a top individual in the aviation sector spoke to me a few days ago, and he was lamenting the attitude of the CBN and the CBN governor. How they are finding it very, very difficult to sort dollars to be able to get all the necessary things they need for the industry. Mercy, it's going to be a very, very gloomy day. Okay, so let, let's look at the, you know, the nation newspaper now. If I'm not mistaken, it talks about uh, the pump price uh, for petrol. You know, you had already mentioned the implication of having these airlines uh, shutting down, what it will mean. I mean, one is asking if Aero has shut down operations, imagine other airlines going, uh, what becomes, you know, of the Nigerian economy, especially when the roads uh, not quite safe, uh, the airlines not necessarily that they are safe, and the waterways, I mean, what becomes of the people? But let's move away from that. I think it might just be a conversation for some other time. Uh, you have the marketers uh, finally hiking petrol price to 170 naira uh, to 190 naira per liter. And uh, according to, you know, the report is that uh, there's some to be some subtle agreement between the federal government and, you know, official oil marketers. And so uh, this uh, source that was very... Um, you know, privileged to be part of that, you know, meeting, reported that. It was agreed that petrol, uh, the cost should just be maybe 10 naira extra. Uh, Chris Kende, do, do you think that, you know, this is actually the way forward? What option do we have? And that's what I asked. What option do we have, Messi? We have no option. We are at the mercy of the marketers, we are at the mercy of market forces, and there is practically nothing anybody can do about it. And it's something like a broken record because every day we come here to talk about the issue of petrol and we continue repeating the same thing. If we have done what we need to do, yes, we will find ourselves where we are. And I continue to say it's just like a broken record that I seem tired of talking about it because in 2015, I'm not even going to successive government, but it's fact that like this. Maybe next year, in 20, this government said that they are going to build new refineries. They are going to revamp the ones we have, so that Nigeria can stop sufficient in petroleum uh, production and pre, uh, petroleum products. But now, seven years down the road, not a single uh, refinery has been built by this government. They have gone as far as the military uh, the sector. They are not going to have come out of it. We import 100, practically 100% of our consumption, petroleum consumption in Nigeria. And I always say this seems to be the only country in the world that produces food in a large quantity, export goods, and now import petroleum, uh, uh, refined petroleum. And how are we able to sustain that? Because this will also depend, this will depend on market, international market forces as we have it now. You see the war in Ukraine and the uh, Russia. Uh, and the effect on the oil sector. And in as much as we continue to import, that is the problem we're going to be having. There is no way out. There is no solution to it. Then we ought to be self-sufficient a production of petroleum products. If we continue to import, the prices will continue to rise on a daily basis, and there's nothing we can do about it. The marketers are not, the, it's not the fault of the marketers. They pick up products, they know how much they're buying the products. You cannot be some in business 
you buy a product for five naira and you want to sell for three naira. What kind of business is that? It's not possible. It will not work. So uh, the government, once again, have to be able to do something about it. We are depending, we have been depending on the uh, Dangote refinery, and that is what keeps uh, their hopes up. Now, it has come to the fact that Dangote refinery cannot even come into uh, to, in the next few months. Don't forget the fact that we are supposed to, uh, that refinery is out of working as of last year. It didn't work. And they, they ship, shifted it to early this year. They are not in operation. We are in half, we are in July. And there is no way that they can come up on the end of this year. So what we have now is free for, and the market will determine the prices of this petroleum. No matter whatever we do, that is why you are seeing scarcity in Abuja, in Lagos, in Ebadon, and every part of this country. Because the marketers don't even have enough to be able to uh, distribute. And for them to be able to continue meeting up the market, and then they have to raise the price. And that is why we find ourselves in the situation. And that's bitter truth. Well, unfortunately, it feels like, you know, you have other uh, papers, for instance, the Nation reporting that uh, the federal government is not in the know of this hike, that, you know, all marketers or the pump price has actually increased. It's not been so that, you know, the expected 165, or you were looking at 170, uh, between 170 and 190 per litre. Uh, that, you know, I don't know if that's such of a... Uh, it's more like uh, some kind messy. of hypocrisy. Messy. Because, Be messy. You know, the, if, you did, the, if you do the sector, if you do regulate the sector, there is no way you can determine prices for oil marketers. It is not done anywhere in the world. So, so, been so has it been deregulated? Yes, it has been deregulated. It has been. So, but, it but has you, been deregulated. But the thing is... Um, Yes, we understand that it's going to be a transition. I'm, I was even going to ask you about that. That's on the Disney. Uh, the truth here is it looks as if it's shrouded in secrecy. I really don't know because it's looking like we're speaking in hush voices. We're just hush hush. The government is, uh, you know, not being very vocal and being bold about it. If we're deregulated, then let Nigerians know. Let's not begin to make it look like, you know, it's some kind of secret that we're trying to keep away from the people because that's what it is. So why would the government not be, why would the government be silent when we already know that we have deregulated? But let's get to the other part of it. On the, this day, he talks about the transition on of, of the NMPC. Are you excited about this? It's also expected that the CEO, uh, you know, relevant stakeholders would begin to conduct the regular checks, the internal checks, uh, to ensure that everything is straight. But my question to you is, are you excited about, you know, this transition? And do you think that this would mean well for Nigerians? It would bring good tidings? I don't sound like I'm not a, a pessimist. <laughs> uh, let me try to be optimistic that this will bring us good tidings. Maybe this is not Christmas, so good tidings for the on the Christmas period. <laughs> so, 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 so. But I want to believe that if we do the right foot to make sure that these agencies of government are allowed to operate the way they are, then I have good news. But I don't know. I, 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 the, for me, let's see, the Nigerian factor will always come. And I am not um, optimistic that we are going to get it right. We have not changed the mindset. We have not changed the personnel. We have not changed anything within the system. What we are just having is a change of name. And it's a great circle of people that you're going to um, move around. And um, are we going to get them from Are they recruiting new people to be able to take over from those that are here there now? No. So until we have the kind of orientation we need to have and be able to run some of these things as personal um, businesses and not government businesses, I will tell you that nothing will change. But uh, as we said, let's see whether we can have good tidings in July. <laughs> good tidings only come during the Christmas. That is not yet uh, All right, so um, uh, Chris, we we'll just quickly look at this one. It talks about flood and flooding. Now, on the Daily Trust, you bear uh, four dead as 11 communities relocate. That's on the one hand. Also, you have, uh, you know, in Oshun State, the issue of flood as well. And flooding is everywhere. 
you know, in Nigeria, Lagos is not left out. I mean, for some days where we had it raining cats and dog, it hasn't been quite easy for Lagosians, those who have lost their lives and those who have also lost their properties, what have you. Chris, what exactly is the situation with us? Because I know that the, the flooding that we experience or we're experiencing in Nigeria, it's not like it's that natural disaster that happens like the hurricane. Why can't we sort out the issue of flooding? Because it feels like it's almost impossible. What's going on with, uh, you know, the issue of flooding in Nigeria in different states? Because it's taking lives and that's a threat. Mercy, there are several factors. First of all, most, uh, you, you have to remember that Nimet warned of, of the, uh, what is going to happen and the, uh, the flood uh, that will occur within this period. Nimet has foretold that as late as last year. So that prediction is coming true. Second is issue of climate change. Flood is not only limited to Nigeria, it's across the globe. London, most streets of London in the same time I mean, we're flooded. The same thing in the United States, in the Far East, and, and uh, even Europe, all part of Europe. But the problem is that once that happens within the confine, they find a way of um, solving the problem. Ours have become so perilous that uh, we cannot even find a solution to it. And other point also could be that human need. We are the government on a daily basis tell people to stop trying to gutter, clear their gutters, and the rest of them out. And every Nigeria will be sitting, will be supposed to finish in and in a bottle of something to throw it on. Somebody will from the house and um, instead of emptying his, uh, his bin into a, a, a place that can be carried, he pour it into the gutter and the rest of them. But the fact that then also the way we plant our cities, you see instances where people build houses blocking. Um, uh, the, 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 the flow of, uh, of, of water and flood. And definitely, if you block that, water will always have its own uh, effects. That is not all the time, because if you go to some of these places, uh, you see that the flood is just torrential and that the point that you cannot even control you. What I just believe is that our disaster management uh, team, NEPA and the rest of them, show up their antics and be able to spread their effects. And I'll tell you that in those days, that in about four or five years ago, I used to I do a lot of road uh, movement as a, as a FR series celebrity special marshal. Uh -huh. And I remember Please. one particular time, about two or twice, I was coming from Abuja, and I got into Lokoja, the Lokoja uh, um, uh, bridge of road for four, four hours, we could not cross that road. I could not cross from Lokoja to Okene, which is the next uh, district. The whole road was flooded. So I think that has the largest extent have been concerned now. But that All right, is the Chris, better. we have to go now. Ask Nigerians to be careful because the more we still fall. Chris, thank you so much. We have to go. Uh, we appreciate your, the insight and perspective that you brought in this morning, uh, looking at the pages of National Dailies, and we look forward to sharing more of your thoughts uh, in the course of the week. Thank you very much. I have a wonderful day. Bye. You too. Chris Kende Wandu is the Executive Director of African Governance and Leadership Initiative. Thank you so much for being part of the show once again. And that's it. We take a break. When we return, it will be time for us to look at our first conversation right here. We'll be looking at the issue of mental health and speaking with an expert. So please stay tuned. But just before then, let's tell you what happened today being the 19th day in July. Stay with us.